Hello everybody, Adam Parks here with Receivables Info, coming to talk to you today about five questions to ask yourself about the Americans with Disabilities Act uh, in terms of compliance for receivables management firms. And so the Americans with Disabilities Act is something that has become a hot button issue over the past couple of months within the receivables management space, mostly based on the Domino's versus Robles case uh, that came out of the Ninth Circuit Court in early December, where basically it was determined that uh, Domino's Pizza, um, their website and their mobile application uh, were not ADA compliant or accessible through uh, for those with disabilities. And so there was a lawsuit, Domino's lost. Uh, they appealed it to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court refused to hear the case, which means that we're now finding that our websites and other online presences, web uh, payment portals and other things, now all need to meet the requirements of the Americans with Disabilities Act or ADA. So let's learn a little bit about what the Americans with Disabilities Act is. The Americans with Disabilities Act prohibits discrimination against individuals with disabilities in all areas of public life, including jobs, schools, transportation, and all public and private places that are open to the general public. Now many of you that run offices and, and have office facilities know that you already had to be ADA compliant in terms of your physical facilities, but this new Domino's versus Robles case is starting to take that into the online world. And now your website, payment portals, and anything else that you have online also needs to be accessible by those with disabilities. So what does that mean? I want to start by, you know, let's just kind of cover the five questions that we're going to talk through today, and then we'll go through each one of them one at a time. But the first question is, what is ADA compliance? The second one is, why does it matter for our receivables management firm? Then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what changes my website may need to see in order to become truly ADA compliant. And then we're going to talk about how long does it take to become compliant and what's involved in that process. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what happens if you're not ADA compliant with your website. So I want to cover these, uh, these five quick topics here, and then we're going to spend a little bit of time talking with Mr. Todd Lansky from Resurgence Legal Group. I'm here in his office today, and we're just wrapping up his Americans with Disabilities update to his website, and I thought it would be good for you to hear directly from a client who has gone through this process. So we'll just kind of start it off at the beginning and work our way back, um, but the first thing that we have here is you know, what is ADA compliance, what are the requirements, and how does that work? So there's a few different requirements that apply to the ADA process, and the first one is going to be your WCAG. So the WCAG is the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, and these guidelines ultimately tell us what we need to know or what we need to do in order to make our online presence truly ADA compliant. So this can have anything in terms of the contrast of the colors of the text versus the background colors. This could be um, you know, back-end coding schemas and categorizing information the right way so that it can be read by these third-party accessibility tools. Uh, there's a lot of things that ultimately go into that, but those guidelines are pretty clear and drawn out for us. We also have Section 508, which is the government regulation that anything that we're doing um, in terms of the federal government needs to meet the accessibility guidelines. So any business that you're doing with the federal government, student loans, anything like that is going to have to meet that requirement as well. And then on the tail end, we also have the colorblind accessibility. Now, colorblind is not technically a requirement of ADA, but it's one of those things where if you're going through this process, I highly suggest that you take it to the next level. Uh, it may not be a legal requirement, but I think it's the right thing to do, especially if you're already going through this process. There's no reason not to take that extra step. 
So as we go into question number two, why does ADA matter to my receivables management firm? Well, the reality is that we live in a litigious environment and we have consumer attorneys that are regularly trying to litigate against us with frivolous lawsuits about a variety of different things. And so at this point, we want to build some defenses around your business uh, so that you can protect yourself from those types of frivolous lawsuits. Uh, I, I think it's important that we do everything that we can, not only to protect ourselves, but also to take that step forward and include those with disabilities. Uh, you know, there's going to be plenty of people within your account portfolios that may have one disability or another, and I think being able to communicate with those people and enabling them to interact with your business, both online, over the phone, um, or through whatever mobile apps you may be using, I think it's important that all of those things meet these guidelines. Now, why does it matter to you? You don't want to get sued. You want to take the next step and you want to include as many people as you can in your online world. And this is just another step in the right direction. So let's talk about uh, number three, which is what changes does my website need to comply with ADA? Well, there's a lot of different things. First, let's start by talking about the background code information. All the images need to have appropriate image tags, descriptions, and there needs to be a breakdown of the language so that it can be read by these specialized third-party tools. I think that you know that's a, a really important part of the process and probably the most time-consuming part of the process, but it is part of the process. Um, beyond that, we're gonna wanna make sure that the navigation works without a mouse, that somebody can get to all of the pages on your website without physically having to move a mouse around and click. You're going to want to make sure that they can tab their way through or they can use voice activated software and by building your website the right way you're going to have a lot of that pre-built in um, you may have to make some changes to your code schema in the background to appropriately categorize information and it's not just the content that's written on your website sometimes it's about the uh, the form fields that you have on your website. So if you're collecting information either through payments or if you're accepting complaints online or anything else, you need to meet that accessibility guideline and enable somebody who is disabled to read and interact with that content. So very important parts of kind of the back end coding. Now on the front side, you're gonna see a couple of changes as well. You may see changes to your font. You may see changes to the font size, to the color backgrounds, the color of the font. There's so many different things that can play into Americans with Disabilities Act compliance, but those are some of the changes that you might see on the front side. In addition, you're going to want to have an accessibility page on your website that describes all the different ways in which a consumer can consume that content that's on your website, giving them maybe some suggestions for tools that they might use that you've already validated work well within your environment. So a lot of different pieces and parts to that. Uh, and you may also wanna make an update to your privacy policy. Your privacy policy, most of you have made updates for the CCPA rule in California. Uh, and you may also want to have your attorney review it with the lens of Americans with Disabilities Act as well. And how does that affect your terms of service and your privacy policy on your website? So you may see those kinds of front end changes. You're gonna see some back end changes. Um, not a lot of it is, is truly visible to somebody without a disability, again, a lot of the work is done in the background, but you may see a few minor tweaks to the front end design and interface of your website itself. How long does it take to become compliant? Well, that's a tough question. Every site's a little bit different. Now, if your website's a little bit newer and it was built for search engine optimization, you're going to find yourself with not as much work to do than you would on an older HTML based website. Um, so if you're using WordPress and you've got good search engine optimization, chances are there's a lot of things that can be done fairly easily. I would set the average timeline in terms of coding hours between five and 15 hours, depending on the complexity of the site itself. Um, so there's definitely a time block there. And the projects that I've been involved in personally, it's taken me about two weeks to go through the ADA compliance process. So there is definitely a process to it. It does take a little bit of time. So the sooner that you get started on it, the better off you're gonna be. So question number five is, you know, what happens if I'm not compliant with the ADA standards? Well, chances are you may get a lawsuit and you may be sued over it, or maybe nothing will happen if nobody ever checks. 
So this is really one of those things where you have to decide for yourself what your risk tolerance level is in terms of those types of lawsuits. Is this something that you want to fight in court or is this something that you feel can be done upfront and personal? So you do have to kind of choose for yourself as to whether or not this is something that you want to undertake. Uh, but it is something that I highly suggest for groups because I do believe that we're going to see more lawsuits coming in on the ADA guidelines from these consumer advocate attorneys. And I think getting out in front of that is just another great way of protecting yourself. But like we talked about earlier, it's also really important that you're including these consumers and enabling them to interact with your business online just the way anybody else can. As we're rolling out the video today, we also released an article on receivablesinfo.com on the same subject. Uh, we go into a little bit more depth in the article, so if you want to go give it a quick read. It'll help give you a little bit more flavor as to how uh, we've approached this problem. Now, today's video is sponsored by Branding Arc, which is the receivables management industry's premier marketing firm representing over 100 debt buyers, collection agencies, and law firms. Um, it is a service that Branding Arc provides, and it is something that they can assist you with in terms of uh, whether or not they built your website. They are fully capable of assisting you in complying with the Americans with Disabilities Act. So a big thank you to Branding Arc for sponsoring today's video. Today I'm in the offices of Resurgence Legal Group and I will have Mr. Todd Lansky here to talk with you a little bit about his decision to move forward on the ADA project and what his experience was becoming ADA compliant. All right, now I'm here with Mr. Todd Lansky from Resurgence Legal Group outside of uh, Chicago. And uh, Todd was one of the first movers as we started working on the ADA products. And, you know, I was in the office and I thought we might just spend a few minutes talking a little bit about your experience kind of going through the process. So let, let me start off by asking you, you know, what kind of prompted you to ADA and, and what made you one of the first movers in terms of uh, complying with this uh, new rule that kind of came out of common law rather than regulation? Sure. Just quite honestly, being in the receivables management industry, we're always, as you know, at the forefront of compliance and we're constantly looking at ways we can protect and enhance the consumer experience. And the ADA was something unique that we, I think, took an extra step and an extra look at to see how could we not only protect ourselves as a business, but also protect the consumer experience. So um, when we started reading more and more about the ADA and some of the potential exposure there, the first thought, quite honestly, was who do we engage to build out a process to support that? Unfortunately, that was Branding Arc. Well, it does work out well that obviously I'm the CEO of Branding Arc, and, and this is one of the products that we've been offering to the marketplace. But we've been working with Todd for I don't know, three or four years in terms of uh, marketing, web development, and a number of other projects. and. This just kind of was a, a good fit in between. It's been my experience when I'm working with Resurgence that they are very, very focused on the consumer experience and making sure that the consumer is able to communicate and that they're doing everything that they can to provide a positive experience, even though they have a strong litigation model to their collections side. So I think it's interesting to see how these kinds of groups have approached that. now. With full disclosure, you know, Todd and I have worked together on a number of different things. Um, he was one of the individuals that had recruited me to join the RMAI board to begin with. Back then, it was still DBA. Correct. Um, in the year I joined the board, the year that Todd was president. And so I've learned a lot from him through the years and, and was really excited when he kind of reached out to me and said that, you know, I, I view ADA as a threat and I want to find a way to address it. And it took us some time to come up with a solution, but I'm pretty comfortable with where we landed. Yeah, I am too. And, and obviously, we've learned a ton from Adam and his group and, and what he has brought to the table. So when we reached out to him for the ADA piece, uh, it, it was a process, but it was you know back and forth. It was a collaboration in terms of gaining information and ultimately coming up with a product and a process that we were comfortable with. And ultimately, at the end of the day, we think it's enhanced the consumer experience. That's awesome. Well, Todd, I really appreciate you having me out at the office again today. I always love coming out to visit here uh, on the north side of Chicago and uh, looking forward to seeing you again at the RMAI conference in a couple of weeks. Always a pleasure to have you in the office. My employees and, and staff uh, certainly love the, the experience as well and, and try to pick your brain the best they can for a couple of minutes, but uh, appreciate the time and look forward to seeing you uh, in a couple of weeks in Vegas. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, and we will uh, 
put out another couple of videos before the conference here. But uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, feel free to comment below. Follow us on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, and also go check out receivablesinfo.com for your news needs in the receivables management industry. Talk to you soon. Take care.